The Earth is old, 4.5 billion years old to be precise, and I don't think there's any way that you can refute that. But obviously we know that there are groups of people who do refute that, the young Earth creationists. And today we have found one of those young Earth creationists who has, wait for it, proof. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Magic Spoon. Now, as we all know, doing what I do requires a huge amount of brain power. And what does Magic Spoon offer me for breakfast that I wouldn't normally get? That's right, protein, which is crucial for brain function. Magic Spoon cereal contains 14 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar, and four net grams of carbs with each serving at around 140 calories. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb and GMO-free, but most importantly, it tastes amazing. You could try Magic Spoon's best-selling flavors in a four-flavor variety pack featuring cocoa, frosted, fruity, and peanut butter. They are all great flavors, but crucially, even though Magic Spoon tastes exactly like the cereal you used to have in your childhood, it is super nutritious. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it, for whatever reason, they'll refund you your money, no questions asked. So click the link in the description and use the code SIMANDAN at checkout to get $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash SIMANDAN to save yourself $5 today. Right, back to today's video where By The Book Ministries has some young earth proof, would you believe it? So we're gonna take a look at these proofs and see what we can see. Let's do it. Hey, thanks for joining me. As a pastor and also an evangelist who goes out and shares the gospel, I often converse with people who subscribe to other religions, atheists, the lost, and they often ask me, do I believe in science? Just to point out here, it is very condescending to call all atheists the lost. As an atheist myself, I don't feel like I belong to anything. Uh, but crucially, I don't feel like I need to belong to anything. Uh, yeah, as a Christian, I love science. I reject bad science. As Christians, we reject bad science. See 1 Timothy 6.20. Which is great, and many Christians are the same. They believe that science and religion can coexist, so kudos to you for that. And often, the next question is, do I believe in a young earth or an old earth? Implying that if I believe in the young earth, I'm absolutely insane. Insane is harsh. I would say misguided. <laughs> well, sign me up, admit me to your nearest asylum, because boy, I believe in a young earth. Allow me to give you three quick reasons why I believe in a young earth. Excellent, let's hear them. Number one, the Bible. Genesis chapter one is not poetry. It's not some imaginative vision Moses dreamt. It's not a parable. Genesis chapter one is literal history. Literal history. So just so I get this straight, you believe that your God literally willed everything into existence. I do have a particular gripe though with verse 17, where this is the part where God apparently put all of the stars into the firmament. Now we know that a lot of stars in existence are literally billions of light years away from us. Science, remember? So have they migrated from the firmament since they were put there or did God get it wrong? Or did the people that wrote the Bible get it wrong? Because of course, back then, they didn't know of solar systems or galaxies or anything like that, did they? Granted, it was an absolute miracle and no one was there to observe it, but the way it was written, the style is consistent with an historical narrative. Yes, but to be fair, I could write something in a historical narrative as well. The sacred unicorn thrust its wings through the air as it sprayed out from the end of its horn one billion inflatable bananas. The unicorn saw that this was good and that these bananas would go on to inhabit the backyards of all who lived on Earth. Happy with her work, the sacred unicorn shed her wings which went on to seed all flying beasts of this land. She then spent the rest of her days locked in the giant ice motel nestled in the rings of Saturn, governing the giant inflatable bananas from afar. This of course is all nonsense, apart from the Dr. Peel stuff, but it is written in a historical narrative form. Doesn't mean it is true. 
But that is why I'm careful not to call Genesis chapter 1 scientific because by definition, it's not scientific. No one was there to observe it, to witness the event. It's to be taken by faith. Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Furthermore, in the New Testament, Jesus himself references Genesis. He references Adam and Eve. Noah, Abraham, he appeals to Genesis because Genesis was literal history. Genesis 1 through 11 contains the same characteristics as Genesis 12 through 50, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, 1st and 2nd Kings. And what are those common characteristics? The writing style of a historical narrative. Again, as we stated and shown, this does not prove that it's true. Read the first five books of the Bible. They all read exactly the same. It's an historical account. Well, some might argue and say, well, what about the old earth theory? They can argue and say their interpretation of Genesis chapter one is historical as well. But that goes into my next point. Number two, the usage of the word yam. So just to get this straight, your second proof is pretty much the same as your first proof, which is to lean on the Bible. In the Old Testament, but specifically in the book of Genesis, whenever we see the word yam, which is the Hebrew word for day, coupled with a number, it's always a literal day. And to reinforce this interpretation, we see the phrase evening and morning, which signifies the phenomenon of what we understand as a literal day. Whenever we see those three coupled like that, it always means a literal day without exception. So when you have the word yam day plus a number coupled with evening and morning, that's pretty concrete evidence that that's talking about a literal day. Okay, fair enough. But the existence of a day doesn't prove or even disprove a young earth it's just the existence of a day. One would have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to fit billions of years into Genesis chapter one. Not really, because you could just throw Genesis chapter one out the window and then you wouldn't have to make anything fit. They would also have to marry the secular interpretation of the origin of the universe with the biblical account. And as Christians, we should not twist God's word to fit man's word and his interpretation of the science. But our interpretation of the science is just that. It's science. It has evidence, reams of evidence, and as well, it doesn't follow a single book for any of its proofs. We must simply stand on God's word. Like Exodus 20, 11, it says, for in six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That's it. That's all. We must simply stand on what God's word says. Yes, there are multiple meanings for the word yom. I understand that you have the day of the Lord, which is signifying an event. But when you have the word day coupled with the number like the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, without exception, those always mean a literal 24 hour period. How did they know that a day was 24 hours long back then? We didn't know about that fact until around the 19th century. This was way after the Bible was written. That's it. That's all. And the last reason why I believe the earth is young is because the implications it has on the cross. If the universe is billions of years old and the earth is billions of years old, Subsequently, the earth, the greater part of the earth's history is filled with death. Okay, but I don't think I understand your point. It's a part of life that must be accepted. Nothing can go on forever. But the Bible says Adam's sin brought death into the world. Now, depending on what old earth camp you fall into, this is a major problem. Old earth camp? There's more than one. For example, if you subscribe to theistic evolution and you believe that Adam evolved from a bipedal ape-like creature, that means you have millions, if not thousands of years of death occurring before Adam's sin. 
I do know that a lot of religious people are happy with evolution and how it works and how I understand it. But I don't think those same people believe that Adam's sin is a literal event. I could be wrong, please correct me if I am. Major issue. But believing in the old earth model in general carries the same issue. You have millions of years of death, disease, suffering, and mass extinctions. When God finished his work in the end of Genesis chapter one, he said that everything was very good. I find it hard to believe that death and cancer and arthritis and disease is very good. So what does that tell you then? Think about it. And some will push back and say, well, Adam's sin only affected humans. Really? Genesis 3.14 says that the serpent was cursed above all of the other animals. Genesis 3.17 said because of Adam's sin, the ground was cursed with thorns and thistles. And by the time of Noah, about a thousand years later, the whole world was full of violence. Romans 8 says the whole of creation groans, groans in bondage to corruption because of the curse of sin. And it is awaiting the redemption of God's people. And when that redemptive event happens, we will see the restoration and the redemption of all things to a state like the pre-fall world. Remember, during that time, people were vegetarians and, and animals were vegetarians as well. And when this redemptive event occurs, there will be no more carnivorous behavior, no more disease, no more suffering, and no more death. I don't mean to be rude here, but people have been saying this for a very, very long time. I personally don't believe there's ever gonna be any of these single events. If you aren't a science follower, you will know that we are omnivorous creatures. That means we eat both plants and meat. Disease will never be eradicated fully. Bacteria, for example, were here way before we were, and they'll be here way after we go. See Isaiah 11, six through nine. Remember the purpose of the gospel, that we are all sinners, and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. If there were billions of years of death, suffering, six or seven mass extinctions, that's devastating to the core of the gospel. Unless, of course, you stop trying to marry the two things together and just accept that all these things actually happened. But I believe prior to Adam and Eve's sin, there was no death or disease. But once they fell, once they sinned, they cursed the ground, they cursed the animals, they cursed the whole of creation, which makes the gift and eager expectation of eternal life that much sweeter. So do I believe this is a salvific issue? I would say it depends on what old earth camp you fall into. Some are pretty out there, but ultimately none of us knows it all. Except we do. We understand that the earth is 4.5 billion years old and there's so many lines of evidence for this. It's just ridiculous. We have honed some dating methods which are simply amazing and quite frankly undeniable. So if you want to follow the science, then please do. Brilliant. But please do not try and marry the Bible and science because it won't work. Well, there we go. By the book ministry seems like a really nice guy. However, his examples of proof here just won't cut it. Thank you all so much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like the video and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week and I'll see you on Friday where some flat earthers have a go at physics questions. It is amazing. Join me then. See you soon.